In Module 4, we're going to look at exponential models. In Module 3, we looked at linear models. At the very end of Module 3, we said, well, not all data is best modeled by a line. And in Module 4, we're going to be looking at such a case where a linear model is just not the best. Now, in a linear model, as x increases by 1, y increases by a constant amount, which is what we call slope. In an exponential model, as x increases by 1, y will increase or decrease by a fixed percent. Not a constant amount, but a fixed percent. Now, here's one example of exponential growth, as you can see in the graph. And you can see that as x is getting bigger, y is rising at a faster rate. Now, this scatter plot shows you an example of exponential decay, where as x gets bigger, the y value is getting smaller. Again, in exponential decay that we see here, the y value goes down, not by a fixed amount, but by a fixed percentage. So one way you can determine if you have a linear model or an exponential model, if they're talking about a percent change, it is exponential. If they're talking about a fixed amount change, it is linear. Now, in an exponential model, in order to get the predicted value of y, the general form for an exponential equation is y hat equals a times b to the x. The a is the initial amount. Okay, that is the amount when x is zero. x usually represents time. Time could be months, it could be years, it could be days, it could be weeks, it could even be hours. So, when x is 0, y hat is a times b to the 0. Now, any number to the 0 power is 1. So, when x is 0, that's your initial amount. y hat is a when x is 0. That is also called the y-intercept. And what is b? b, if it's bigger than 1, and we'll see some equations, if b is bigger than 1, then it's exponential growth. If b is less than 1, it is exponential decay. b will never equal 1, because 1 to any power is just 1. Okay, so we just said that a is the y-intercept. It is also the y-value when x is 0, also called the initial value. If b is bigger than 1, then b is called the growth factor, and we have exponential growth. If b is less than 1, it's the decay factor, and we have exponential decay. All right, so now, if we, let's look at the top equation. y hat equals 24 times 1.21 to the x. Because the number getting raised to the power x is larger than 1, that is exponential growth. The 24 is the initial amount. And what does 1.21 represent? That is the growth factor. Now, how do we know? Let's say x is being measured in years. How do we know what the percent changes each year? Well, you ignore the 1. And what are you left with if you ignore the 1? You have a 0.21. That is, as a percent, 21%. So the number after the 1 in the parentheses is the percent change per unit of time. And 24 is the initial amount. Now, what typically gets measured? What is an example of exponential growth? Well, it could be population of rabbits. Rabbits multiply very, very quickly. Okay, it could also be the population of a bacteria. Those are two examples of exponential growth. Now, if we look at the second equation, y hat equals 250.97 to the x. That's an example of exponential decay. The number in the parentheses is less than 1. 
What's an example of exponential decay? Radioactivity, a radioactive substance. What does the 250 mean? That's the initial amount. 0.97, since it's less than 1, that's the decay factor. Now, 0.97 means that as we go from, let's say X is being measured in years, as we go from year to year, 0.97 or 97% of the initial value remains at the end of a year, which means we're losing 3% or 0.03 of the initial amount. So again, the number in the parentheses for exponential decay is the amount that remains after, for example, one year. 97% remains, so 3% of the initial amount is being lost over that one year period.